Hey guys, so today I'm doing a digital art tutorial on Autodesk Sketchbook. So the first tip I have is to sketch your drawing on a piece of paper before uploading it onto Autodesk Sketchbook. Especially since I'm um, a beginner, like I started doing this over like quarantine summer. And I just, I started off as a traditional artist. So I think it'd be also like really great um, to find a new hobby, especially since we were like stuck at home. Like even now, I think anyone can pick to draw art up as a hobby. Um, you don't really need like art, like skills to succeed in digital art. You can always like trace pictures and stuff. Anyways, I finished sketching the drawing and I just basically uploaded it onto Autodesk Sketchbook. And I'm laying the opacity and locking in and adding a new layer. I'm just tracing what I sketched. This is just optional. Like, I find this a lot easier personally because I can't, I just, I don't know why I just can't draw well on my tablet. So for my second tip, I'm just going to introduce you to the toolbar. Especially for beginners, it's really important to understand how to use the software. So first I'm using the selection tool and selecting part of what I want to like transform and move using the transformation tool. I can move it like anywhere I want it to. I can even like stretch it or I can like move it left or right. I can also flip it or rotate it this is like really helpful especially when you're drawing something and something just looks a bit off to you you can always fix it using the transformation tool without erasing everything you did now i'm using the paint bucket tool and you can use this to like fill in the background um, a solid color if you want. But that's not what I wanted, so I took it off. Another trick is just like um, adjusting that top bar and then clicking on the parts you want to color and fill in. Next, I'm basically using the selection tool and tracing part of the leaf that I wanted to fill in a solid color. And then I would go back to the bucket tool, pick the color, and then click the part I selected. Now I'm using the linear gradient and clicking on those little like circles, I can choose the color I want. I'm using green and I can just adjust the circles, like move it around to like see where the placement of like the gradient is. There's also the radial or like circly gradient. I'm not sure what it's called, but you just do the same steps. You like change the colors in the circles. So here's a drawing I did like earlier using watercolor. I uploaded to the software and using a eyedropping tool, I just copy the color, which is something I could never do traditionally. So now I'm just using the color adjustment tool and I can change the colors to whatever I like. I know the last one is from light to dark, but I'm not really, really sure what to call the first two. But you can just play around with it and see what you like. There's also a ruler tool, which I don't really use that often, but it could be really helpful. There's three different types and here I'm using the straight edge one. This ruler is um, by far the best one. You can just adjust it to like any curve that you need. <laughs> so I'm like changing it into the shape of the stem and then I can just trace that. There's also an oval shaped ruler. I haven't found a use for it yet, but it can be helpful for other like graphic design stuff.
There's also a perspective guides tool. This can be helpful for drawing like buildings or just anything using perspective. We also have the symmetry tool and whatever you draw on like one side it's going to mirror or reflect on the other side. We have a stroke stabilizer tool. It kind of just smooths out anything you write or draw. So like here I'm writing have a good day and you can see how the G and my O's are basically like smoothed out. Here's our shape tool. Um, you can just draw straight lines with it, circles and squares. I also have a tip for like taking advantage of your layers. It's going to be really helpful for intricate drawings. So you can see here that I've basically finished it and I'm just showing you all the layers that I used. There's also a thing called a color puck and a brush puck and what they do is you can change the color and make blending easier or make the brush size smaller or bigger. So you can just see me um, here changing the color. I'm just swiping it left and it will make the color darker. And using the brush puck, you can just swipe up or down and you can change the opacity. When you swipe left or right, you can change the size of the brush. And finally, for my last tip, it's on blending. I think it's better to start testing um, your brushes to see which one's the best for blending and to change the opacity whenever you add on colors so that it transitions well and make sure that they're similar in color. Also, I think it's best to start off with a limited color palette so that you can better understand value in blending. Or you can just use one color like gray. So here's the final product of the digital art on the left and the traditional art on the right. So thank you so much for watching. P.S. I'm here editing right now and I didn't think it'd be this challenging. Also, I hope you guys find digital art fun and pick it up as a hobby. Bye!